The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, and even Four Swords are all fan-favorite games and hold a special place in Zelda history for some bizarre and interesting reasons. Most are unaware that Nintendo actually asked Capcom to produce a total of six Zelda games from the very beginning, with the possibility of developing even more. Not only were they the first Zelda games to not have been developed by Nintendo, but how they began development and why Nintendo let Capcom create them is an insane borderline blackmail story on its own. In the late 1990s, one of Capcom's leading game directors, Yoshiki Okamoto, met with Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto to discuss a long-term partnership. It would begin with remaking the original Legend of Zelda for the Game Boy Color. If it became a success, Capcom would begin development of their own brand new original Zelda game. Originally, Miyamoto would refuse the offer, but Okamoto gave him a chance. Either allow Okamoto to develop the remake, or they would begin work on their own Zelda-like adventure game, but change just enough so they wouldn't get in trouble for releasing it. Basically forced to make the decision, Miyamoto felt it would be better to have Capcom working on the Zelda series instead of the possibility of a competing Zelda-inspired series, and it possibly becoming even more popular. Instead of just the two games, Miyamoto asked him to develop six different Zelda games for the Game Boy Color, two being remakes of previous games and four new original titles, which would all be released back-to-back -back every four or five months. Capcom began work on the remake, but issues began coming up. Okamoto and part of his team wanted to continue with the agreed-upon plan, while others on the team wanted to just skip the remake and immediately begin development of their own Zelda game. In an interview with a Japanese website, Miyamoto, Okamoto, and Yamashita had the following to say, I'd like to ask about those Macho Man developers at Capcom, but before that, I want to ask you and Mr. Miyamoto how your team's been progressing the game along. Well, for the first little while, I had led the team totally alone, without Miyamoto's help, because I figured they'd easily be able to do this much by themselves. So I left them alone, and for the first year, we did nothing but lose lots of money. Yes, lots of money. He told me that even a year ago. It's been taking up money for ages now, with all the people we've brought in. So I came in, and I saw that nothing was working out, and I went up to Miyamoto and was like, Help. Me. Did you think that leaving the team alone would be alright, Mr. Miyamoto? Well, I trusted him. That sure stabbed you in the back. Big time. What made you realize that you needed help? The members of our team weren't agreeing over the direction that game development should take. I thought we should produce a new version of the first Zelda game, released for the NES in the US, for Game Boy Color. Then, if it went well, we could move on to the next stage, making a more ambitious game. But my people wanted to skip the first phase and create their own Zelda game from the beginning. Mr. Miyamoto normally creates the game scenario, stories, and characters after the initial gameplay is designed. If the action part of the game is solid, the scenario can be developed from there. We started by using the Capcom scenario creation company, Flagship, to create the scenario first. Then we created maps and started developing the game. I don't believe that worked. Using that system, the team had to redo both the scenario and the maps several times to make all the elements fit. During the process, we realized that since the Game Boy Color screen is narrower than a TV screen, the player must scroll the screen to the left and right to see the whole room. That created some difficulties in gameplay development. If you see a crack on a wall, you know that you need to use a bomb to break it. But if you can't see the crack, because all the walls in the room aren't visible at once, you could miss it. That led to more difficulty in developing the maps. While development continued on the remake, Okamoto had a team coming up with ideas and concepts for the new game. When asked for help, Mimoto gave the suggestion of making three games instead of one, basing each off of a piece of the Triforce, Mystical Seed of Courage, Mystical Seed of Power, and Mystical Seed of Wisdom. Yes, three games would be incredibly difficult to develop at the same time, and release in a short time frame. That was exactly Nintendo and Capcom's intentions, releasing the games quickly. Similar to Majora's Mask's one-year development cycle, so, Nintendo would allow Capcom to reuse character models and other assets from Link's Awakening to heavily speed up development time and release the games before the holiday of the year 2000. Capcom also had assets from their cancelled remake to reuse to speed up development time even more, which was thought to be around halfway complete at the time. The third game would release a few months later. 
Each of the three games were also meant to have a specific theme. Mystical Seed of Power was about the four seasons with the Rod of Seasons, able to change the seasons which then changed the game areas. Mystical Seed of Wisdom was to use a color theme with various events, areas, and tools built around certain colors. Mystical Seed of Courage was to have the theme of time, where you would need to use morning, noon, evening, and night in order to solve various riddles in the game. Capcom and Nintendo featured the first game in the trilogy, Mystical Seeds of Power, at Nintendo Space World 1999. Soon after, they began having issues with having all three games connect to each other, first wanting to use the cell phone adapter to transfer data, but deciding on the password system instead. When further concerns were noticed, Miyamoto suggested to scale the games back from three games to two games to help development and to help make each game distinct. He also suggested to have one focus more on action while the other focused on puzzles. So what happened to the three games? How did they change? Mystical Seeds of Power was combined with the half-finished Zelda 1 remake to become Oracle of Seasons with a focus on action. Mystical Seed of Courage became Oracle of Ages with a focus on puzzles and the ideas and concepts for Mystical Seed of Wisdom were mostly used in Oracle of Ages with some concepts carried over to Oracle of Seasons. This is why Oracle of Seasons shares most of its overworld, all of its bosses, and other assets with the original Zelda, while Ages is mostly new. The decision was also made to include characters from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask to appeal to the fans of those games, and slightly speed up development that would be spent on concept art and the creation of new original characters, along with their stories. With this new plan in place, development progressed much faster, and they would be able to reach their release window as the games would release around the time of the Game Boy Advance. They also tested ideas that would take advantage of the Game Boy Advance, since it was backwards compatible, but they were concerned adding more features would cause the games to be delayed even further. When the Game Boy Advance was eventually delayed, the decision was made to include the features and release the game one month before the Game Boy Advance, in hopes the Game Boy Advance features would boost sales of the Oracle games as well as the new console. So what happened to the rest of the six Game Boy Color games? How did they start development of the Game Boy Advance games? Well, in our next video, we will focus on exactly what happened with the history of the Minish Cap, A Link to the Past, Four Swords, and exactly how and why Capcom's partnership with Nintendo on the Zelda games ended. And of course, I want to give a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who give us video ideas like this, some of our Zelda theory, top 10 list, and discussion topics that we discuss on our podcast or other videos. If you would like a shout out at the end of all of our videos or the beginning of our podcast, the Hylian Gamescast, as well as any of the other benefits mentioned. So thank you, Jon Snow, Zane, Fran, Wiggly Wiggle, Nod Narb, or Brandon, Sober X, Mr. Monoclad, Metroid, Jen, Super NX, 64, David, Zoe, Natsu, Jesse, Andre Moy, Ashton, Justin, Candy, Chad, BKRS7, Larulian Sheep, Largnar, Monica, Shadow to Us, Rusty, Lovable Christy, Henry, and of course, Gus. Thank you all so much.